afternoon, Jan. Hi, Michael. How are you? Doing very well. Very well indeed. I uh, am finally back in the uh, the land of Mac owners. So, uh, my okay. <laughs> my you bought yourself new... a Mac? Yes, yes. My brand new M3 came in a little bit early, so I've been uh, having some fun with it. Okay, so you enjoyed your holidays with uh, with that Mac? <laughs> yeah, it actually just came in um, Monday. Yeah, I think it was Monday, um, maybe Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, Tuesday uh, mm. afternoon. So. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the uh, the holidays with my family, and then, uh, um, then just the last couple mm -hmm. of evenings, uh, getting the new laptop set up. Okay, so you did already some uh, some iOS development then. Well, I got uh, um, I I basically go through all the different Hello Worlds for uh, for the different platforms. Uh, so so yeah, I did uh, I, I did the, you know file new project on Swift inside of Xcode. I got that running. Okay, let's move over to uh, Kotlin, mm -hmm. get Android Studio installed, and get that uh, running. And um, got uh, you know, got my uh, Node applications building and running, and <clears throat> moving on to you know, all the different platforms. Oh, when, yeah, when do you as well. <laughs> when when do you when do you sleep? Oh, I, I, yeah, I uh, <laughs> I really don't have any trouble there. So. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, yeah, just it, uh, it's gotten it's gotten to where each of these different uh, uh, platforms IDEs they just you know they mm. just set things up for you. So you just mm. um, uh, just create a brand new project to make sure that everything is set up, and then in the process of running it, it's like oh, you need to install that simulator, you need to install that runtime. Mm. So okay, you know, next, 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 and then you know everything's working. Mm -hmm. Great, great. I enjoyed your th your third chapter. Ah, excellent. I I sent you a mail uh, this morning, morning, our morning time, so it was uh, night. Okay. It was it was a very very nice chapter. You should have written it a year <laughs> ago. <laughs> no, but yeah. th that was really something that that summarizes everything mm. uh, on, on on the sy syntax front with very nice applications. Yes. The explanations of of the conditions, the projections. Um, mm -hmm. As I wrote, I'm a little bit scared that people who are complete completely new to historical modeling. Mm -hmm. um, it it might be quite abstract for them. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, um... Yeah, to summarize for those who uh, who aren't reading chapter three, that's um, how to read a historical model. Yeah. Right. And uh, and so yeah, um, I um, yeah I wanted to make sure that I motivated the you know, the existence of this this way of thinking in chapters one and two, and then um, and then got this in as early as possible so that the rest of the book could make sense. Um, now, yeah, a uh, um, an alternate approach would be to gradually introduce um, the concepts of, uh, or the, the the syntax of historical modeling um, along the way. Um, so, yeah, oh. I think uh, yeah, I think you have to start with fact type diagrams. But mm. um, yeah, but I I think it's it's the right place. But people have to make the effort to continue. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, it might scare some of the people, um, but once they get through that, uh, it will it will be much clearer for them. Mm -hmm. Because anyway, the, the fact type and the fact instance diagrams, okay, they they are very. Um, people might wonder why do we do that. But mm -hmm. in the first edition, also the the patterns came came quite late. Yes. Um, and so here already, like the mutable pattern. Yeah, you yeah, I did move that one about up. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in the third chapter. But I think that's that's understandable. Um, but then the syntax people will ask why. Um, and of course, with all the symbols, it's yeah, the, the, mm -hmm. it's a little bit on on the mathematics side. But okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not it's not that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that Somebody is true. Will. I uh, um, yeah, I introduce and then lean heavily upon the um, the exists 
symbol and then the nut exists. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did I, I, I was thinking about also talking about the, uh, the for all, um, you know, the upside down a symbol. I, I think I probably removed that section though. So, cause um, I end up not using that. that. Well, I, I'm not sure whether that was. Yeah. Yeah. It was basically, so... yeah. For the mathematicians among you, you notice that you know, this dual here, which you see these two things together all the time. Um, I don't use it and here's why. And so, yeah, that was one of those things like, well, okay, for the non-mathematician, I didn't know about that thing and mm -hmm. now you're teaching me about it and now you're telling me that I'll never see it again. So what was the point? <laughs> it was just to uh, exist, don't exist. Um... Yeah, that that was that was all. Yeah. Um, now it's it's not it's not too complicated, but it just are you used to to view to to see this type of of formulas or not? Mm -hmm. uh, and and somebody with a little bit who had a little bit mathematics will 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 understand it. Mm -hmm. um, somebody who who's new to that, uh, but I've, I've no idea how, how much mathematics uh, most people get in their life. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. For engineers, it should not be a problem. Um, people who are just, who are programmers, do they still get a lot of mathematics before or not? Mm -hmm. I've, I've no idea. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I think, I think this is actually just kind of, you know, scraping the edge of, uh, of most people's experience. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of funny that uh, we, we learned some pretty advanced mathematics in school, uh, at least in the, in the States and I think in, uh, in uh, Europe as well. Um, uh, you know, up through, you know, up through high school and, and you know, uh, even, yeah, even most uh, folks, um, you know, in, uh, in the university setting, um, you know, most degrees will have a mm -hmm. little bit of, you know, calculus and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, all of that is, uh, I think, you know, much more advanced than set theory. Yet, hardly anybody talks about set theory in, in primary school. So it's, um, mm. so what I'm talking about here is set theory, and it's yeah. it it's fundamental. And uh, yeah, you, uh, but but yeah, most people have missed that uh, that education. And I'm not talking about all of set theory. I mean, like mm. I said, I don't have the uh, the for all operator in there. Um, mm -hmm. but just, uh, you know, just enough. Um, yeah. And the, um, yeah, the, the, the placement of, um, you know, how to read a historical model before, uh, the analysis chapter, uh, which is now chapter four used to be chapter five. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's deliberate so that, um, you know, that's me saying that even the people who don't write the programs, but, it, uh, but instead, mm -hmm. uh, analyze the problem domain and uh, contribute to um, to developing the models, um, they need to understand this mathematics as well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, when we get into analysis, uh, you know, talk about um, you know, augmenting your uh, your wireframes with these little equations mm -hmm. um, because they're, I haven't... they're perfectly clear and unambiguous. Mm -hmm. I haven't read the, the new chapter four yet. I do it chapter by chapter now, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I finished <laughs> this one quite late. So uh, yeah, I didn't went on to the to the next one yet. But that's for this week. Very good. Well, thank you for that. But, uh, but anyway, it's mm -hmm. it's it's very nice. Uh, so on the content, I don't have to, and I think there were three three minor things, uh, which were yeah, you will find it in the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, um, then what I didn't do at all was the, the logging. <laughs> I did what I started, but very late, on, only this afternoon, was uh, looking into the, the login uh, into Android. Mm -hmm. um, and there I try to understand how it works. Um, because, so, yeah, first thing, <laughs> You need a developer account on on uh, on Google, mm -hmm. so I made that one. I made some some Android apps, 
that I never deployed to the to the store, the Google oh. store. Yeah, oh, I used to, okay. I, I used the third party store hmm. uh, because the Google store had I don't remember it was so long ago had too much restrictions or was not. I just wanted to just for my clients mm -hmm. uh, and not for everybody. I think that was the main reason at that time. Mm -hmm. But so the Google uh, account is is I made it then um, configured a block Maui app. Mm -hmm. But then the thing which I don't understand is that callback URL to the application itself. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Why? why um, okay. Why do? Because I've I've been looking again into the the workflow. Or the the flow of an uh, odd authentication, mm -hmm. but apparently it's not something I forgot. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll bring up the code for Blog Maui and I can point to where uh, mm -hmm. where all that is set up on on this side. So... I didn't I didn't have time left to go search in the in the source code why what you did with it. Yeah. Um, but I thought the the client app itself, well, the authorization server doesn't need to access that one. It goes directly to the Jinaga server. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, that that might need a little bit more explanation, um, particularly around uh, how do you come up with a callback URL, maybe even suggest one for you that uh yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense uh, i think i think i have enough information to suggest one so um let me also so we can t see what we are talking about here is i will bring up well not just janaga.com but uh dev.janaga.com Okay, so blog Maui. Um, da, da, da. Here we go. We um, first line, the second line. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we've got our um, and and we get to that by you know, configuring. So I'll go through configure Google. Mm -hmm. um, to steps you through the different things. Uh, it gives you the authorized domain, so it suggests that part. So, um, mm. and then um, you follow the instructions um, uh, and then it yeah. gives you these two things. Yeah, Michael, there, mm. a small thing. So you have, now we need to create an OAuth client ID. Click on create credentials, but Create credentials is not on the on the same page on Google. Mm. You need to go. Uh, where was it? I took a print screen of it. If I don't, ah uh, no, he goes. Yeah. Um, because at that m moment you were in the consent screen. Oh okay. Yeah, in so... in that uh, consent screen, and you have to click f then first on credentials before you find create credentials. Ah, okay. But just, and now you have cre create yeah. credentials on the top. Just a small thing, but um, it might be worth to mention it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, in fact, let me just, while you are mentioning it, I will go to, um, this is app janaga.com and so in here I've got on the client side some da -da 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 -da. this is in the um, replicator section Wait a minute, where is it? <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, in the authentication session, of course. Okay, so yeah, under Apple. Wait a minute. Oh, Apple. <laughs> there we go. There's the Google section. Okay, so so I've got these different uh, markdown files that give you the little text that it's going to use. Uh, so we have, yeah, we've gotten to um, OAuth client ID, and so da, 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 that's VA. there. Yeah. Um, so first on the right hand side, on the no left hand side in the menu, click credentials. Credentials. Okay. Then click on add on the top of the screen. Yeah. Okay. Just a, sm a small detail, but it might help. Yeah. So you would be here, and then it says, "Okay, click on credentials there, and then create credentials at the top of the screen and select off client ID." Okay. Yep. Excellent. All right. So, yep, that uh that's a good fix. Um okay, and then continuing through, um this is where we get to the uh the callback. So, yeah, yeah providing just a little bit of information about uh, about callbacks. But um, <clears throat> so I've set up two callback URLs, one for the mobile application and one for um, for HTTP YAC. Um, so I think what I can do is I can provide some of the things that you can copy and paste. Um, so um, so yeah, if you're doing a uh, a mobile application, then um, then it can probably come up with something like this by looking at your your app ID and then picking the last segment and saying, okay, that's going to be the scheme. Um, and then, but, yeah. But where in the process is this callback URL used? Um, okay. So, um, so to log in, let's come back over here and we will talk about, uh, let's see, we want to talk about the uh, yeah, this is right here. So, um, and this is code that uh, is going to end up inside of the um, uh, NuGet the package. NuGet package. So it's it's not even going to be visible to you. So, um, so you start a uh, a web authenticator, and that basically is just a browser that is. Um, that is visible inside of your application and you tell it um, start at this request URL and then wait until the um, the the server redirects to this callback URL um, and so what uh, what would happen if you were on the web is um, is from your application you just um, redirect the user to this request URL or maybe even that's the link, uh, and they, they click on the login link and they go over to that login page. <clears throat> and um, then, is that one used to to show you the the login screen from Google? Yes. Yes. Um, so, what that ends up being build request URL. Um, it uh, comes up with some uh, some query string parameters. And then it uh, it takes your auth URL. So let's let's open up another tab so we can see these at the same time. So it takes your um, uh, the auth URL uh, right here. Uh, so this one 
um, this one actually is repdevjanaga.com. So this is uh, login with the replicator, which um, is a little bit confusing because the user ends up on Google, but that's because another step takes place. But uh, um, but yeah, so it's um, uh, it sends the browser to this endpoint, so you can actually have a link um, go to this endpoint as long as you have uh, generated a bunch of query string parameters and put them onto that link. So you've got your response type, client ID, redirect URI, uh, scope state, code challenge, and challenge method, SHA-256. So, um, so this is starting the um, the OAuth2 um, authentication code uh, login flow with Pixie. And okay. then, um, so that's that's what that request URL is. So start the user at that point, uh, then collect their credentials. And then when um, when it's done, it um, you know, the, the identity provider, Google, or um, the Janaga replicator in this case, will redirect the uh, the browser back to um, this callback URL that you set up here. So you told it um, when you're done, uh, redirect back to this URL. And that was that uh, block Maui. Yes. Um, so if you are uh, if you happen to be using HTTP YAC, HTTP yeah. YAC sets up a listener at port 3000 um, on your machine so that the browser can redirect to localhost 3000 and then HTTP YAC knows that um, that uh, it has uh, it has your, your credentials. Um, but if you're using a mobile application, then you provide a callback URL that is not HTTP or HTTPS uh, but instead is some custom scheme. And so, but, yeah. This but for, for example, if, if I run the application on an emulator mm -hmm. um, on my machine. Yes. Then how, how can the Google uh, authorization provider call, call back to, to my application? Yeah, it uh, um, the the Google authorization provider. Um, if we go back to let's see, yeah, yeah. So we're here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and run through this real quick. So we've got uh, we want to do a web application. So we're we're telling Google that we're a web application. That's uh, uh, even if we're a mobile application, that's what we tell Google. And then right here we tell it some authorized redirect URIs. So we tell it okay. it's allowed to uh, to redirect um, back to uh, certain URIs. Okay. The authorized redirect URIs that we set up are uh, actually just this one. So we tell Google to redirect back to repdevjanaga.com. So that's the replicator. that little, Yeah. 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 So um, so we take the user to the replicator. The replicator sets things up and then takes the user to Google. Then Google does the login. It uh, redirects back to the replicator. And then the replicator takes the, um, the, the credentials off of that and then and redirects back to the callback URL. OK. Um... But so the, the client, the, the mobile app, will translate that block Maui uh, colon slash slash callback mm -hmm. in, into into a, into some HTTP request. Right. Yes. Because ac actually, it it has to temporarily open some ports on on my router um, because otherwise there can never be a, a callback coming in yeah so it's um, uh, since th this is a redirect going back to your browser it's your browser that is making that connection to the uh, the redirect URL 
So, um, so yeah, it's not that Google or the replicator is uh, is hitting that uh, that endpoint. Um, they're just saying, um, yeah, okay, let's uh, redirect back to it. Um, in fact, we can walk through this in a little bit more detail using Postman. So let me see if I can get this set up real quick. Da -da -da. And it's been a little while since I've used Postman, so it needs me to sign in again. Um, Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, I need to shrink it down to fit it on this screen. <laughs> there we go. All right. So I think I set this up. I think I might have set this one up. Let me. Yeah, let me take a look at the authorization. Nope, auth no authorization in this one. This one, yes, I do have authorization set up here. Um, oh, but that's that's just a local test. Monster Hotel Replicator. There we go. Okay, so mm -hmm. this will um, we'll we'll go ahead and update this with the settings. Uh, that we have here. Yeah. Um, actually, all the settings are visible right here. OK, so grant type authorization code with Pixie, the callback URL. Oh, yeah, that's a local host callback URL. I don't want to use that one. Let's use auth with Google. There we go. Um, the auth URL is going to be um wait a minute uh the uh, yeah it starts with the callback url sorry callback url um yeah it's going to be one of these two yeah. so let's go ahead and use this one now this was where i put the auth url for google and then the auth token URL. So that's this one. And then the client ID, grab that. Okay. We don't use a client secret because we're using Pixie. And then uh, we do a challenge with SHA-256. Um, code verifier, it's going to automatically generate. We're going to ask for profile read and write, and then some random state. Um, OK, so this is the equivalent of setting up your um, uh, your mobile application with all of these uh, parameters. And none of these are secret, so they can ship with your mobile application. And it'll be just fine. But now we can. Um, we can test out this flow and see things happen. So let me open up the console. And then let me hit the little button at the bottom to get a new access token. So the first thing that it does is it opens a browser window for me to sign in with Google. Let me just make sure that uh, I grab the Sure that I grab the right password for this. I had to change the password on this because I noticed so uh, when watching back the video that you could actually see my password as I typed it in. So, okay, <laughs> let's generate a new one, shall we? Um, so this is. Let's look for my Google account for mallardsoft.com. And 
type in that password. Okay, so I entered the uh, username and the password, and then it did a few things that I couldn't really see, and uh, now it is um, collecting the access token. Um, so uh, what we captured here in the console walks through all of the different steps there. And uh, so you'll be able to see, there we go. To proceed, there's my access token. Let's use it. But what's more interesting than the access token is what we did in order to get it. So we start with a get request to repdevjanaga.com uh, auth Google. So this is my Google auth endpoint. And uh, then here I tell it that the redirect URI is blog Maui colon slash slash callback. So, um, so it says, okay, that's the one that I'm going to, uh, um, you know, to redirect to when all of this mess is, is finished. Then repdevjanaga.com responds by saying, I want to redirect. So uh, the response headers, it's not showing that this is a redirect, but the location that it wants to redirect to is accountsgoogle.com. So this is the, um, the Google auth URL, the actual Google login URL. And uh, before it does so, it uh, fills in a bunch of information. So like it takes the, uh, um, the client ID that I set up with Google. So this is the information that, uh, yeah, that you gathered um, from Google and pasted into the replicator. Yeah. And now this one says, I want the callback to be, uh, let's see, um, oh yeah, redirect URI. So I want the redirect URI to be HTTPS repdevjanaga.com and then my big old uh, identifier here, auth Google uh, callback, auth Google callback. So, um, so basically, um, set up some some login stuff and then redirect over to Google to do the actual login. And when you're done, come back here to the replicator. So that was the first part. And so now we've redirected to authgoogle.com. And uh, this actually shows the uh, user interface. So this is, um, yeah, I guess there's nothing really interesting to show in there. But um, uh, so we've got um, the UI. Um, Actually, it might have done a redirect to this one, and this one is the URI, or the UI. Um, but at any point, at any rate, you've got the um, the user's uh, credentials. They're typing them into a form, and they do a form post. That post goes back to Google. That's the whole point of this uh, this redirect stuff: is mm -hmm. that uh, the credentials never go back to um, to your application or to Janaga. They they go to Google. So you post your credentials to Google. And I won't open that one up because uh, that might actually contain some some secrets some in there. Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, in response to that, um, you can see that it's going to do a redirect on the result of that post, and that goes to um, uh, to the. Da, da, da. Um, yeah, it's not showing. This is interesting. It's not showing that redirect but uh well or maybe there's just okay yeah i think i think these are um extra steps within that form because you enter your uh your uh, uh username first and then it says okay that's protected by a password so it shows you the password box so there might be some back and forth to make that happen um the thing that I am looking for is right here. Um, so we are, okay, yeah, here's the consent form. So yeah, there's lots of different steps to this. That's that's what we're seeing. Um, and when we are finally finished with the um, uh, consent form, then it redirects back to repdev.janaga.com. 
So this git is coming from my browser. It's not coming from Google. Uh, Google doesn't uh, ping the replicator. It just sends this string back to, and I think I can open it this one up. Uh, so it sends this string back to repdev.janaga.com, since that's what I said is the, uh, the callback URL. And that carries with it things like this, um, uh, this code. It's an authorization code then. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And uh, it confirms that these are the profiles that I actually allowed. So uh, uh, open ID and uh, profile. Uh, these are the scopes that I allowed. And then this other scope, which is um, specific to Google, uh, basically getting the Google profile. So these are all uh, the, the piece of information now that you can use this this code. Well, first of all, you have to use this code in order to, um, to get a token. So, um, so the, uh, so RepDev, and you don't see this part because this is all happening on the server. RepDev is now taking that authorization code, calling Google and saying, I got this code, give me a token. And here's how I prove that it was actually me. And that uses a client ID in order to do that. So you can't see that client ID flowing because it's all server to server. Um, and so it, uh, um, uh, repdevjanaga.com gets back the authorization code and um, then it uh, redirects back to the application. Now you don't see a git to blog Maui um, colon slash slash callback um, mm -hmm. because that redirect instruction came back to the client and the client intercepted it. And it knew that, okay, making this call isn't actually going to get me anywhere. Um, this is just a, um, a uh, an indicator that, um, that all this process is done. And so it can take the authorization code off of that, um, that callback and, uh, um, and then continue processing it. So this very last thing that you see here is that it is, uh, um, passing that authorization code up to um, the, replicator. Uh, the replicator, and it is responding with the um, uh, well. Oh, that's the request body. Yeah, uh, the response. There we go. It is responding with the access token. So here's this big old JWT. So. If we were to take apart this access token, uh, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. We have the technology. I'm going to go to jwt.io. <laughs> there we go. Let's uh, debug. Paste that in here. And so now we can see that uh, this is an RSA 256 signed uh, access token. Um, and uh, it is issued by the replicator. And its audience is the replicator. So it's being both the identity provider and the, uh, the resource uh, provider. And so... Why, Why yeah. is this issued by the replicator and not by, by Google? Yeah, and that is because um, the 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 replicator has um, has taken the credentials from Google, and it says, "Okay, now I know what Janaga user is logging in here." Mm -hmm. So um, so it creates its own access token, um, so that you can call the replicator with that access token and act on behalf of that user. So by the time it gets back to your application, it's just a Janaga. Uh, access token, not Google, not Apple, not whatever identity provider you use to log in. So that identity provider was just used to authenticate you uh, for the first time. So that means your application can't yeah. use this in order to call the Google API on your behalf. That's not what this is for. This is used to call the Janaga API. Okay. 
Um, and because the, the information, the data is stored in, uh, in the replicator. The only thing we need Google is, is just to, to allow access to it. Yeah. Yep. So we take this subject right here. And uh, so this part is the, uh, the subject that Google um, created. So that number means me to Google. And then um, the Janaga replicator uh, just put the provider in front of it. So it says, okay, this is a Google ID. Um, and uh, so that makes it unique among all the different uh, identity providers supported. And so now I can take this string and I can look it up in a database and find your public key and your private key. Um, so I can actually access your um, your Janaga user um, and uh, and uh, authorize facts on your behalf. Okay. Yeah. I think this is gonna be another <laughs> video which I'm gonna rewatch yeah. and make and make a small drawing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Try it. Tr try it out on my on my own here and uh, make a small uh, drawing to see where, what, how how it goes. Because mm -hmm. um, it's more yeah. complicated than I thought. Yes, uh, and all of that to uh, answer the question that you uh, asked at the beginning is, you know, what is the callback URL? How do I pick one? And um, the, the funny thing is, in this demonstration, the callback URL didn't actually appear, but it's used right in between these two things. Um, so if I were to do the same thing with HTTP yak, we might actually be able to see it because the browser doesn't know to intercept it. So let's let's put uh, put that away for a second, and let's go back to um, let's see where would I find um, okay yeah I want to go to blog Maui in uh, in VS Code so. Open this up, go to Bog Maui, and here we are, whoops, okay, yeah, now, um, <laughs> okay, so in here I've got uh, some HTTP files and an env.local, um, and so this env.local well, let me just make sure I know that it contains one secret. Let me just make sure that it's properly configured. Um, in fact, I, you know, for right now, I'll just get rid of that secret so you can see this all happening on screen. Um, I can always put it back. Okay. So in HTTP local, I've got my replicator URL. So here I use n25e, and that is... Here we go. Uh, N25e, that is the um, uh, this replicator URL right here from the top. And so then we've got the authorization endpoint. This one is set to authorize with Google. Okay, that's right. Yeah, we we already uh, uh, did this on the on the last stream. Uh, and then we've got the token endpoint. So that's that token URL that just ends in auth token. And here's the client ID, that same thing, use Pixie. And then these two are for setting up authorization and distribution rules. And there's another secret that's used with these that I deleted. So that's the, that's the important part right for, uh, for right now. So let's talk about get posts with auth. So this one is going to post to the read endpoint. Uh, it's going to send in this request, and it's going to use um, OAuth2 uh, authorization code flow. So let's choose the environment. 
So select local, that is .env.local. And now it's configured with those, uh, those parameters. And so when I hit send, zoop, now it goes over here. And let me open up the network tab. We missed a few redirects, but um, we'll still be able to see the, uh, the important stuff. So then I say, um, yeah, log in with this user, and we see a few things bouncing around, and then HTTP yak says it's uh, successful. HTTP yak is running at localhost 3000. So in order for uh, HTTP yak to be able to intercept this uh, stuff, then HTTP yak actually does need to set up a uh, uh, a listener, um, similar to what you were talking about. The difference is that it does not need to open a port because that request is coming from inside the house. Um, what am I coming? What, what do you uh, mean? Uh, by yeah. from... <laughs> That's one of my favorite uh, um, yeah, horror movie references. Yeah. There's a, there's a movie that starts with a uh, a babysitter looking after her uh, um, you know, a kid and you know, it's it's late at night the kid's asleep and uh, she keeps getting calls to, to check on the baby and you know hanging up on the guy and then you know finally she uh, um, she calls the the police they trace the call and they're saying it's coming from inside the house <laughs> but uh, but but here it's yeah, here. it's not coming <laughs> it's not from scary. In yeah, it's, it's it's coming from your own machine. Yeah. So yeah, that's because there's the browser doing it. If it has to get back into my own machine, uh, on the router is is network ad ad address translation. Uh, so the nope. network. Yeah, it's uh, it's not even it's not you know, yeah anything uh, anything even that complicated. So we are making a call look at headers. Um, so here we are talking to um, authgoogle.com. Here's our consent. So this is like the last step in there. And then it um, responds uh, with this one should show. Oh, actually, we can see right here. It responds with a 302. Um, so it redirects. So this one redirects first to location repdevjanaga.com, so it redirects your browser now to talk to the replicator. Yeah. And so your browser talks to the replicator, and it says, uh, okay, this is what, uh, what I just heard, so replicator, do your thing, and it returns a 302 and redirects to um, HTTP localhost 3000. So the replicator doesn't talk to HTTP local okay. 3000. It just sends back that string. Mm -hmm. And then okay. your browser talks to HTTP local host 3000. Okay. So it it's it comes just back in the re response from the replicator <laughs> and it's the browser that redirects. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So, yep, the replicator is done with it. Just said, okay, here's the address. You figure out what it means. And then says, oh, it's localhost. It's me. Because um, it would mean different things to different people. And the fact the fact that it works in, in an Android application, because there mm -hmm. we don't have a... Or is it just behind the screens running a browser then? Yep, uh, it is just running a browser. So when you do... Let's get back to... Blog Maui. When you do um, when you do this and you start a web authenticator, that's just a browser. And okay. uh, so you tell the browser to start at this request URL, and then wait until it receives a redirect command uh, uh, response that uh, points the browser to this callback URL. And then at that point, don't actually fetch that callback URL; just stop. Okay. And then if that, for a mobile application, mm -hmm. if that callback URL uh, was blockmaui colon slash slash callback, uh, 
um, mm -hmm. the browser translates that in in what um... yeah the um, uh, the browser is just looking for that string but um, we also have this yes, that that should point back then to my emulator my Android emulator yes um, uh, we actually do have this um, callback activity <clears throat> So um, let me switch this to what well, should be yeah, if Android should be true. Uh, oh, okay, I think right here. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> but when Android is true, then it, uh, it sets up this web authentication callback activity. Um, and this is just a, uh, a class that registers this application for this callback scheme. And this is actually used for deep linking. So if um, if I have a web page out there that I navigate to in my uh, in my uh, actual browser, the the, you know, the one outside of the uh, the application, uh, and I click on a link that starts with blog Maui colon slash slash, then this is telling the operating system open up the application and let it handle that uh, um, that URL. Yeah. So. Um, so I, 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 I've read that this is necessary in order for this to work. I haven't actually tried it without this, but, um, if you take a look at, uh, web authenticator, um, then all it needs to do is look for a redirect that has that string in it, and then it can stop. It doesn't actually need to ask the operating system to, um, you know, to follow that link. Um, but... I think, yeah, it, I'm, I'm still a bit fuzzy on this detail, uh, but it might be that um, it goes ahead and asks the operating system anyway, just in case this application is trying to intercept the login from some other application. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> that technology. Yeah. But, and yeah. Last week you said... And last week you said, oh, it was much easier than Apple ID. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah, all of that, uh, that OAuth 2 dance, um, it's the same mm -hmm. dance as, uh, that, uh, that I'm using for Apple. So I uh, just put the abstractions in the right places. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. this part is where Apple is doing its work, and then it comes back here, and then take over the process. So I was able to create a new class uh, on, the, uh, on the replicator side that just does that same thing, but for Google. So all the other stuff around it has already been has already been done. So, yeah, it, it was it went faster because um, you know there were fewer steps to it, but then also because I already had all this stuff working, and it was the second one. Mm. So the third one will go just as fast. Amazing, amazing <laughs> that that you got it working. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah. There's uh, lots of tutorials out there on how to how to make it work. Um, uh, I just but no, yeah, but no implementations. Um, yeah, they're they're uh, yeah. I was able to find a lot of the uh, the source code for that uh, from from some of those examples. Um, and in fact, there is a um, yeah. You know what? Um, yeah, when you say no implementations, I think uh, things like this. Um, da, 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 the refresh token. Yeah. This code right here um, uh, for um, for taking a, a refresh token and then exchanging that for a new one. Um, you would expect there to be a NuGet package that does this. But uh, I couldn't find one. So, um, I mean, it turned out to be not too much code. That might be why it doesn't exist. It's like, take this. You probably want to own this code anyway. Um, yeah, I am going to put this inside of the Janaga Maui uh, NuGet package because I know that this is sufficient for the Janaga replicator refresh token. Um, but this is one of those 
bits of code that might actually want to live outside of uh, Janaga Maui. It might want to be a, a more general thing. Okay. But that is what this whole thing is all about. So, yeah. Um, I can add some instructions here. I can even add some copy paste. Um, like I can provide this for you. I can provide this one for you. I could even provide the, um, there's a, there's a different one that you use for, um, uh, for Postman. If you are using Postman on the, um, uh, as a you know, software as a service. Um, so you can redirect to Postman. They can say, Oh, you know, somebody is doing a login right now. I know who that is. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, how much of this do I want to teach right here versus ah, just just make it work? Yeah. So. Um, or perhaps just a, a link to, mm. to a page where, where it is well explained. Because on or out you find so many things on the web. Mm -hmm. um, but perhaps there is so many, so much that you... <laughs> Um, which yeah. which scen scenario is applicable to to this implementation? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did have to piece this together by finding this information in a lot of places. Uh, so yeah, I can go back through my notes and see if I find one that's just okay. This one is succinct and and complete. Yes. Um, Besides, besides that, I find the the wizard that you implemented uh, very, very interesting and very accurate. Um, you can just follow it without understanding, and mm -hmm. um, it's only that <laughs> that part that didn't yeah. make it. Okay. At least for me. Yep. Uh, yep. So I'll work on that. Um, I might even put a uh, if I can't find. A page that already explains it very well. I might actually put a new page in here. Um, uh, well, here I'm talking about authorization and distribution rules, but authentication. Mm -hmm. Put an I'll authentication just, page yeah. up here and explain what's going on. In fact, that's probably better because uh, that way I don't have a link to somebody else's explanation that could go away. I will see if I can make a, a nice drawing that if I yeah. <laughs> manage to understand it and draw it mm -hmm. and that might be useful for everybody. Yeah, yeah, that'll help. Mm. Great, mm -hmm. great. So I continue on this one for, for the next week. Excellent. All right. Um, yeah, and I, I know the thing that I'm going to be working on for next week. I started doing a little bit of experimentation with it, but uh, that is the um, yeah the the server side uh, push, so server sent events, uh, hmm. notifying the uh, the client in real time that uh, you've got some new data. Okay, with uh, that there is data available on the feeds. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's something that I had working a long time back with WebSockets, and uh, the the scalability of that was uh, was just not what I wanted. So, you know, put that aside. You know, worked on you know all of this this feed stuff, and then uh, now we're back to okay, I need this. Um, and uh, and how do you want to do that with the notification service of Google and and Apple? Also has one, I I guess. Uh, yeah, they both have them. Uh, that notification service is really good for if your app is no longer running, um, and then they can uh, they can mm. notify your app. Um, you know, they they can either send a uh, a toast notification just straight to your screen, or they mm. can push some data to your app, and your app starts in the background, takes that data, puts it into its own database, and then shuts down. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what that's really good for. Um, uh, but if your app is already up and running, then um, using a, uh, an HTTP 
oriented push is uh, um, is is better for that. Uh, so um, so could be web sockets, but I'm not going down the web sockets route. The uh, yeah. um, yeah, the other one that uh, that is has kind of won this uh, this war is service sent events. Um, so I'll go through what that's all about and uh, how I decided to use that slash modify it. Because it, it's a while ago that I looked into that, but uh, before Google, perhaps they changed in meanwhile, but before they said, best thing is to use notifications because in that way, uh, Google is, is scheduling all, all the notifications from the applications together. And that allows the, the phone to shut down the radio model for mm -hmm. certain times to save battery. While if every application itself is is going to mm. to use the radio uh, to to pull in fact, um, then the mm -hmm. the power consumptions will will increase. If I remember well, that was the reasoning behind it. Okay. So, so the notification was a, a general service from Google that coordinates all the notification requests from all the applications together. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So that might uh, yeah, that that might actually be a a good reason to implement that even even in this case where you've got the application live. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I still need to do server sent events for the web. Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, Janago works on the, on the web as well as uh, mobile. So mm -hmm. um, so I'll continue down that path and have uh, have this ready for the web. In mm -hmm. fact, the the thing that I need it for most immediately is the user experience uh, for the uh, um, for the replicator as a service. Um, there's a there's a certain place in there where you don't get notified that uh, that a step has completed, and it, you refresh the page, and then something appears. Um, but uh, you know, say, so, okay, I need to fix that user experience, um, mm -hmm. and so service sent events are the way to uh, to fix that uh, experience. So. Um, so I'll get that working first, and then um, then do this research optimized. and see if it uh, can be optimized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> but that means I'm still not catching up. <laughs> <laughs> every every time I come a little bit closer, you jump two steps <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. away. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I want I want this to be a great developer uh, experience, yeah. and so yeah, if you're running into problems, then I want to mm. pave that road. Mm. Never mind. I will mm. never catch up, but <laughs> I will keep running. <laughs> Good. Okay, Michael. Thanks you. Thank you very much. And next week you will be there. Yes, indeed. Okay. Then we see each other next week. All right. See you then. Thanks, John. Okay. See you then. Bye bye. Bye.